more of Patricia Raskin Positive Living on WPRO. To speak with Patricia and her guest, call 438-WPRO or 1-800-321-WPRO. Now, here's Patricia Raskin. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Welcome back to Patricia Raskin Positive Living. I'm, I'm really very excited to be interviewing whom I consider to be an icon, and I'm not the only one. Uh, Dr. Bernie Seal was honored as one of the top 20 spiritually influential living people on the planet. This is Dr. Bernie Siegel. He's an author of many books. He's co-founder of ECAP, Exceptional Cancer Patients, a therapeutic approach that he calls carefrontation to help patients interpret their drawings, dreams, and images to express their feelings about the healing process. As a physician who has cared for and counseled innumerable people whose mortality has been threatened by illness, Dr. Bernie Siegel embraces a philosophy of living and dying that stands at the forefront of medical ethics and spiritual issues that our society grapples with today. He was one of the first people to really humanize medicine. He was a pioneer. I remember Dr. Siegel's work in the 70s. And I've read his books, and thank you for being on the program, Dr. Bernie Siegel. Hi, hi, Dr. Siegel. Yes, hello. Hi, thank you for coming on the program. Oh, my pleasure. Yes, and and I know your best-selling book was Love, Medicine, and Miracles, and your new book is The Art of Healing, Right. Uncovering Your Inner Wisdom and Potential for Self-Healing. How is this different from the other books? Well, the biggest thing is the content of drawing. In the first book, I think we had maybe half a dozen or so. Hmm. After that, publishers don't want to put in drawings. You know, it's like Mm -hmm. too expensive to involve. And here we have 70 drawings. Why? Because I entitle it basically making the invisible visible. Mm -hmm. I always say, why do we, you know, why do we go to sleep? It's a dangerous thing to do. Uh, More dangerous, you know, hundreds of years ago when you didn't have uh, you know, security systems and everything. But I really think, and I mean this literally, that we sleep in order to communicate with our unconscious or with consciousness mm-hmm. and with our bodies. That dreams can literally tell you what is going on within the body, give you information that you don't have intellectually, mm-hmm. and uh, help you, in a sense, unify your life and the choices you make, but especially if it's related to medicine. But it's very difficult for a lot of us, and I'm included in that, mm-hmm. to interpret our dreams. I wake up saying, what was that all about? <laughs> yeah, it. I, I really feel that, you know, I'll have dreams that uh, I feel it's more like going to a movie, if you know what I mean. And I wake up and I'm not very involved or concerned about it. But there are other times I have dreams when there are very meaningful situations involved um, mm. and I wake up and I remember them I mean and I know darn well what they're about mm. you know whether it's something I'm fearing or questioning or anything else so I'd say a lot of times when we have maybe superficial dreams you know it's like things to keep you a little busy um, mm. and and uh, go over what happened that day but uh, they're not monumental problems but believe me if you had a dream in which Someone came into your bedroom and said, you have a lump in your right breast. You need to check it out, Mm. you know, and see a doctor. And you wake up and feel it and find out you have cancer. And the doctor who comes in to take care of you is the doctor. Well, you didn't know it was a doctor. is the woman from your dream, Mm. you see. So Mm. that happens. A cat Mm. appears and says, my name is Miracle. This is how you should treat your cancer. Mm -hmm. The lady wakes up and writes it all down. And she's not, you know, a health professional who would know any of that. So is this what you do with people? You help them them understand their healing through the dream? Well, not only the dream, but what's easier is a drawing. See, if you said to me, uh, should I have surgery next week? Mm. Or what job should I take? Or should I move to California? Who should I marry? It doesn't matter. I'd say draw the options, you see. So if you draw your treatment as a devil giving you poison, we need to work on that. If you draw yourself in the operating room and it's a black box with nobody taking care of you, 
we need the need to change your decision or say, you know, when the woman said, no, I want to go ahead. All right, then let's change your image of it. See? And she can spend four or five times a day picturing surgery, going beautifully, feeling wonderful after it. And, that, and a week later, you get a gorgeous drawing. And, 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 but let's carry that farther. What happens with that kind of drawing after the surgery? In many cases, does it work? Does the surgery go yes, well? You see, your body doesn't know you're not having it done. Mm. So by imaging it, and let me give you a specific example that wasn't in the dream or a drawing. You are, you think you are being radiated, but due to a mer- medical error when the machine was repaired, there's no radioactive material in it. And you say, well, wouldn't the doctor realize that? The doctor didn't know it until a month later when he did his routine inspection mm. to make sure the machine was in order. So every patient, and I mean this literally because it blew his mind when I said to him, yes, you feel terrible. You just learned you haven't treated anybody, but it's not because you're stupid. You don't realize what you're telling me. He said, what do you mean I don't realize? I said, obviously, all the patients acted as if they were being treated. Yes. They had side effects and shrinking tumors. Wow. And the eyes almost popped out of his head. Mm. And he said, mm-hmm. oh, my God, you're right. That's I how never powerful. forget that. Yeah. That's how powerful so. it is. Just want to say, folks, if you'd like to ask a question to Dr. Bernie Siegel, who, again, uh, is, is an amazing, he's an icon in the field of wellness and holistic medicine and healing. His new book is The Art of Healing, Uncovering Your Inner Wisdom and Potential for Self-Healing. Um, please call us at 438-WPRO, 438-9776, or 800-321-WPRO, 800-321-9776. So what you're saying is really, Bernie, the stories we tell ourselves, the drawings, the pictures, really tell the story in a lot of right. ways. Yeah, and I want people to get their intellect and their intuitive wisdom mm-hmm. to come together, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Because if you do something in conflict, and it doesn't matter, again, what it is. You will have trouble in whatever that choice is that you made. Yeah. And then people get confused. I want yeah. to have it. Why am I not? Look at the picture you drew. So there are people who want to do something and draw a horrible picture, and there are people who don't want to and draw a beautiful picture. And then we sit and go over this, because mm. I generally tell them, follow your intuition. It knows what the best choice is for you. Mm. And I may add, there's plenty of other information in the book um, you know, about my experience in life and the word you use, the potential. Yes. Because that's yeah. what I'm trying to get people to understand, that we have a potential. There are a lot of mechanisms built into us. Solzhenitsyn in his book, Cancer Ward, used a wonderful term. He talks about self-induced healing. Mm-hmm. See, not a spontaneous remission or a miracle, but self-induced. Yeah. And the symbol he uses is a rainbow-colored butterfly. And boy, I loved reading that Hmm. because the butterfly is a symbol of transformation. The rainbow is your life in order, and literally every color has meaning. So you get your life in order, you know, create that new life, and amazing things happen in your Hmm. body because of the message it gets. I always say just, you know, this one simple statement that on Monday morning we have more heart attacks, strokes, suicides, and illnesses. So people understand you can't separate yourself from your life and your feelings about your life because it changes your body chemistry. You know, you know Bernie, I, I have to share this. This is something that happened to me, and I think it really, I think it's an illustration. Um, I, I've had, I've been doing a lot of inner work, and I've had sometimes a picture of, you know, when, when you feel bad or when you feel disempowered. So if I close my eyes, I would get the picture of that little girl over there, you know, in a room kind of, you know, hunched over. Mm-hmm. I had that picture for a long time. And then I've been doing a lot of work about this and, you know, really working on it. And one day when I went to look at the picture in my mind, I didn't see that anymore. It was like the room was all mixed up. I couldn't find a little girl. When I went back to do the image again, the little girl was standing in front of the room, just standing there. And I said, wow. And and things really started changing then because I could really see that the little girl was getting out of that. And she wasn't going to be in that room anymore. And she was kind of standing, looking bewildered, like, what next? But she wasn't hiding. And I thought that, and and there was, there were changes that happened in my life because of that. Mm -hmm. And and again, you know, as you said, it it meant something to you. It was significant. 
Because often, you know, even if somebody said to me, gee, I had a dream, there was a monster chasing me. <laughs> I said, do you ever think of stopping, turning around and saying, what Who do are you want? You? What are you doing here? <laughs> See, or if Bernie Siegel appears in the dream, then to stop yeah. and say, Who's Bernie Siegel? I mean, to, you know, if somebody said, I don't know who he is, how would you describe him? Mm-hmm. What would he mean to you? Mm-hmm. And then you begin to understand why he showed up in the dream. You know what I mean? But, but you know, Bernie, so many people don't pay attention to this. I mean, right. Even my own story. or They, they don't, they think it's all yeah. kind of yeah. voodoo. Yeah. Right. But it's not. Mm-hmm. I mean, believe me. I mean, I've had, I mean, I could take up your whole program with dreams I've had uh, when I had certain symptoms. And my my partners, you know, other surgeons who were working with me were worried I had cancer. Uh, the dream told me I didn't. Um, I mean, it's just amazing things. When I was wondering if I was working with cancer patients, you know, to be the doctor, see, so it'll prove I don't die. They do. Mm-hmm. And then I had a dream in which my life was threatened, and I wasn't frightened at all. I was with other people who were all screaming, shouting, yelling, and I'm sitting there calmly, and I realize, no, you're not doing this for the wrong reasons. You're doing it for the right reasons. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. you know, when things like that happen, uh, it helps enormously because I say that's when you wake up and yeah. thank you. I got an answer. Do you right. think we should be in groups? Do you think we should work with a counselor to help us get these Im- under not only draw the images, but understand them? Yeah, I mean, if, if the counselor could help guide you. The truth is the wisdom's in you, but the, well, what I often tell people is, it, you know, it's like whether you had a dream, I'd say, fine, write it down, draw a picture today, but don't look at it until tomorrow. Mm. See, then you're looking at it as if somebody else drew it, because when you're drawing it, believe me, your consciousness blinds you to what you put on the page, because mm. you, you see, I could set out to draw a perfect picture, you know, to impress everybody, because I know what it all means and everything. But when I've looked at my own pictures, it's like, hey, how did you miss that? (laughs) And I realize your consciousness blinded you. So when you pick it up later and look at it, you realize, hmm, you know, that's not such a good sign. You know, it's like, you know, drawing your family and they're not all hugging each other. Let's put it that way. You know, something. Right. And you set out to make sure everybody knew I had a wonderful family. Right. All right. All right. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to have more of Dr. Bernie Siegel who was honored as one of the top spiritually influential living people on the planet. Very honored to have Dr. Siegel on the program with us today. He's the best-selling author of Love, Medicine, and Miracles, and his new book is The Art of Healing, Uncovering Your Inner Wisdom and Potential for Self-Healing, which was released in September. So uh, you can give us a call after the break if you'd like to speak with Dr. Siegel or share your dream or share your image or your drawing with him. Or if you're grappling with illness and you'd like some advice, uh, please call at 438-WPRO, 438-9776, or 800-321-WPRO, 800-321-9776. You're listening to Patricia Raskin, Positive Living, right here on News Talk 630 and 99.7 FM WPRO, the voice of Rhode Island. And we'll be right back with Dr. Bernie Siegel. You are listening to Patricia Raskin, Positive Living, right here on News Talk 630 and 99.7 FM, WPRO, the voice of Rhode Island. And we are here with Dr. Bernie Siegel, who is the best-selling author of Love, Medicine, and Miracles. His brand new book is The Art of Healing, Uncovering Your Inner Wisdom and Potential for Self-Healing. And in 2011, he was honored as one of the top spiritually influential living people on the planet. And he really always is breaking new ground, particularly in his new book, The Art of Healing. Uh, welcome back, Bernie. Thank you. Patricia. All right. Let's, um, let's talk about the book now, The Art of Healing. Talk about how those drawings can help people interpret their own dreams and help them move to the next step. Right. But what I was thinking of, one of the things even I share with people is get your children to draw a picture. Say, I want to put it on the refrigerator. Don't tell them you're going to analyze it. Because our kids were a scream years ago um, when they were younger. If they'd be drawing pictures in their bedroom and I'd walk by, they'd slump over on the picture. So I wouldn't (laughs) interpret it. But if they had a problem, like one of them said to me, where should I go to college? I said, draw it on the page. 
And it was perfect, you see. I mean, because there's past, present, and future on that page. And, you know, he had been at one school, went to another, didn't know what to do next year. But because of how he put it on the page, it was easy for me to say, this is what's in your future. Mm. And, you know, to go back there. And Mm. it made it easier for him. See, the other thing is that shows up that, that was a shock, two parts. One, your, your, and I mean this literally, your life and childhood is stored in your body. Mm. How you mention that, you might say, in a symbol, in a drawing, is through numbers. So a woman drew a broken heart with 21 drops of blood. Mm. That was a year she was sexually abused multiple times. Wow. In the book, there's a picture by a reporter with a clock with one hand pointed at 12. That was the age at which she was traumatized. Wow. And I got her to do that because she thought, you know, oh, Siegel, this is crazy. I mean, you can see in the drawing, she has a big head. I mean, there's an intellectual reporter who thinks Siegel's crazy years ago. <laughs> but once I said that to her about her drawing, what happened when you're 12 years old, boom, the interview changes, you see because she realizes that is stored in her and that that, you know, one hand pointed at 12 on a clock, you know, it's not about I don't like deadlines. It's about something significant with that number. Um, Now, somebody could say 12 months ago my house burned down, but the number is the way we store things. The other was that I have never met a physician who has ever been told while in training that Carl Jung interpreted a dream and diagnosed a brain tumor correctly. Now, Mm. when I read that in a book, I thought, why didn't somebody tell me that? So I would talk to my patients differently, ask them if they had a sense of what was going on. Mm. You know, for instance, um, uh, you know, when people learned I like drawings, they would often bring them. Uh, They even made a coloring book in the operating room for children because they did a lot of children's surgery. Mm. So when the kids came and waiting for surgery, they were handed this book to color in. Mm -hmm. And it says on the front page, for instance, the anesthesiologist, you know, you'll meet an anesthesiologist. He's wearing what looks like green pajamas. (laughs) Well, a child draws the anesthesiologist in red, even though on the page it says he's wearing green. Now, what that child intuitively knew is there was really significant danger from some of the drugs used to relax Mm -hmm. the muscles during Mm -hmm. surgery because his mother had muscular dystrophy. Mm. Now, I didn't know this, but when I looked at the drawing, I said to the anesthesiologist, look what he's, you know, this child is telling me something, he's worried, uh, there's danger. The anesthesiologist then told me. Now, what did I say to him? I said, turn to the last page. If he draws himself purple, the spiritual color, we're canceling the operation. I said, I'm not taking a chance. Yeah, because he could be saying, I'm going to die in the operating room. And what did he draw himself as? No, on the last page, he had a red shirt and black pants, which he wasn't wearing. The okay. surgery was on his leg, and he was saying, wow. I'm unhappy, and I don't like what's happening here. Wow. So we went ahead, you know, and he did fine. Um, mm. But those are the symbols. And the other was that anatomy, I mean, I have diagnosed patients based on their drawings mm. um, because they're telling me what's going on in their body. Again, in the book, mm. there was a boy after surgery his abdomen was distended. Everybody's telling me they think he's obstructed, you know, mechanically blocked. I should reoperate. I asked him to draw a picture. And he hangs an x-ray on the wall in his room. He doesn't have an x-ray on the wall. You know, where does this come from? But in the x-ray, he doesn't look obstructed. I mean, the intestine are all mm-hmm. the same size. And I said, no, we're going to wait and watch. And it had mm-hmm. to do with the infection and, you know, his intestine weren't starting to work again. Wow. But again... uh uh, and I would often put these drawings into the chart for people to look Amazing. at. And then they'd say, hey, that's interesting. But yeah. I was going to mention, a mother brought in a child uh, who had very large lymph nodes in her neck. And she said, lymphoma runs in the family. I'm afraid my daughter has it. And she said, my daughter did some drawings for you. And she handed me one of herself with a big swollen jaw. And the second one was a big cat with obvious claws, good-sized mm. claws. I said to the mother, don't worry. Mother looks at me like I'm nuts. What do you mean, don't worry? I said, your daughter has cat scratch fever. Look at the drawing. And, you know, it doesn't mean my wife always says, honey, tell them you also operate so they don't think (laughs) you're crazy. Yeah, I took a no doubt. I mean, I'm not going to take a chance, you know. 
And it was. It was an infection, and it was cat scratch fever. Well, all right. Dr. Siegel, I'd love to continue. We, we're going to have to go close. But right. what are the most important things caregivers need to remember or folks need to remember? As Joseph Campbell said, when you're going through hell, stop and ask yourself, what am I to learn from this? Hmm. Then the curse becomes a blessing. And the same way hunger leads you to nourish yourself, that's what you get out of the difficulty hmm. nourishment by changing and meeting your needs. Thank you for your incredible work in the world, Bernie God Siegel. God bless you. Really. <laughs> and, and people can log on to BernieSiegelMD.com, and I'm going to yeah. have you come back on the show. Okay, Thanks dear. so much. All right. Bye. Wow. Boy, what, a, what, a, what an honor and a pleasure, and what an amazing, what an amazing contribution Dr. Bernie Siegel has made.